Assalamu alaikum dear students. Uh, by the end of this lecture, you will be able to enlist the different ascending track, the features of somatosensory area one and its functions, the functions of somatosensory association area, and the role of thalamus in sensory system. Reading material is guidance, chapter 48, 13th edition. You can see the different tracks that we have already done in which the dorsal column medial meniscal tract, the anterolateral spinothalamic tract, other tracks, there is the spinocerebellar tract, which you will do with motor system, the cerebellum. Ascending tracks, those tracks which ascend from the spinal cord to different areas of the CNS. So we have the spinocerebellar tract to the cerebellum. To the reticular formation, we have the spinoreticular tract. To, to the olivary nucleus, we have the spinoolivary tract. To the tectum of the midbrain, we have the spinotectal tract, spinovestibular tract, spinopontine tract, and spinocortical tract to different areas of the cortex. So what you need to know is the names of these tracts. We'll talk about sensory cortex. So in the sensory cortex, we have somatosensory area one, in which area one, two, and three. We have somatosensory area two, in which area 43, according to Broadman's uh, numbering. We have somatosensory association area, which is area five and seven. Of course, you know, there is the occipital loop for visual perception, and there is temporal loop for auditory sensations. Let's talk about somatosensory area one. In somatosensory area one, the upper limb is presented medially, the lower limb, uh, the upper limb is presented laterally, and the lower limb is presented medially. The highest representation is of the lips because they have the highest number of receptors. After that comes the face, then thumb, and you can see there is topographical map of the body. Each and every part of the body is presented at a specific area on the in the somatosensory area. This enables localization of sensations. As you know that dorsal column medial meniscal system as well as anterolateral spinothalamic tract, both they decussate before reaching somatosensory area. Therefore, somatosensory area always receives sensations from the opposite side of the body. The spatial orientation, as we mentioned, the lower limb is presented medially and the upper limb is presented laterally. Functions of somatosensory area, there is localization of the different sensations, judging of degrees of pressure, judging the weight of the objects, shape and form of objects, what we call as seriognosis, judging the texture of objects. Re regarding pain and temperature, somatosensory area one can localize pain and temperature. So if there is damage of somatosensory area, there is loss of all these sensations except pain and temperature because thalamus is important along with the uh, reticular formation of the midbrain, uh, of the, uh, sorry, of the brain stem, very important in perception of intensity and quality of pain. So because of the role of the thalamus in perception of intensity and quality of pain, removal of somatosensory area does not cause loss of perception of pain sensations, but there is loss of localization because somatosensory area plays a very important role in localization of all sensations. Somatosensory area two, there is no, there is very weak degree of localization in general. The face is presented anteriorly, the leg is presented posteriorly, there is no topographical representation of the different parts of the body. If somatosensory area 2 is removed, there is no effect on somatosensory area 1. However, if somatosensory area 1 is removed, then the function of somatosensory area 2 is lost because the somatosensory area 2 receives the signals from somatosensory area 1. There is somatosensory association area. We mentioned areas 5 and 7. That, uh, it is in the parietal loop and its function is interpretation. It combines the information from the different parts of the cortex, so from somatosensory area 1, thalamus, visual, auditory areas, olfactory areas, from different sensory areas of the cortex and gives meaning to perceptions. So it does interpretation. Another function is morphosynthesis in which recognition of complex objects. Damage to the somatosensory association area leads to loss of the ability of interpretation as well as a morphosynthesis in which loss of the ability to recognize complex objects. The person, he or she will not be able even to uh, have sense of his or her own body. Thalamus is relay center through which all ascending tracks pass through as we have already studied. Another important role of thalamus is discrimination, perception of crude touch, pain, and temperature along the lower brain stem and basal regions of the brain. And we have mentioned that loss of somatosensory area one 
will not cause loss of perception of root touch, pain, and temperature because thalamus, along with the lower brain stem and basal regions of the brain, plays a very important role in perception of these sensations. There are fibers which, which we call corticofugal fibers or signals. These signals are inhibitory signals from the cortex to the different uh, relay stations like thalamus, medulla, spinal cord, while to control the sensitivity, to keep the sens sensory sensitivity in balance. So it's not uh, a lot and it's not less. So what does it do? It decreases the later spread of signals causing sharpness of signals. It keeps the sensory system in a balanced sensitivity range. Thank you. And if you have any questions, we'll discuss in the lecture.